inventory remains high. And why that matters is because the people who currently live in those homes and are not making their monthly payment, well, eventually they're going to join the renter population. That's right. That's, that's exactly what's going to happen. And as they do, there will be even more demand for rentals. So again, that's a good you know, uh, supply and demand. But so it's, it also means that as an investor that's looking to invest in real estate, it means that there's actually product out there for you to invest in right. yep. when you're looking to buy something. So there is, there is product forthcoming. We just don't know when that, you know, whether it's going to come as a tsunami or a trickle. There's yeah, right. debate on both sides. But yeah, there is. There's a lot of inventory out there that will eventually come on the market and, uh, and those renters need to go. And then the final point is really, you know, interest rates are at record lows. So, um, you know, that's just... 3.1% uh, on a 15-year fixed loan I saw the other day. It, that's for owner-occupied? or Yeah, for owner-occupied. That's yeah. amazing. It isn't a sum. And so, um, actually, they do make uh, uh, one final couple of points which uh, are, are important, and that is inflation benefits real estate investors, and uh, real estate is one of the best hedges against possible future inflation. And there are people out there, uh, most notably Robert Kiyosaki, who I'm told is predicting hyperinflation in 2016. Now, some people think he's wacky. When it comes to that, and there's well, notable what, what economists that disagree that with be? that. What percentage well, yeah. would hyperinflation yeah. be? I have no idea, but just the name well, scares probably me. Probably double digits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think <laughs> deflation is scarier. Yeah. But when you think about it, when you think about it, it does make some sense. You know, real estate prices have uh, been down and depressed for a very long time now, and there's pent up demand both from the tenant side, being the people that are in houses in foreclosure that are going to become tenants. And on the owner side, from people who have uh, uh, doubled up, uh, moved in with friends and family, and are going to eventually be looking to get out into either the rental or owner pool. So uh, you know, there's there's a lot of kind of stuff steaming on the side over there, waiting for uh, the right conditions. And you know how it is. As soon as it starts to happen, it's like a little snowball that starts to roll mm -hmm. downhill, yes. and it gets very big very quickly. So you could see how there's a theory that. Uh, hyperinflation could happen in 2016 and you know there's probably plenty of things you can do to debunk that theory but uh, right now when you look forward it, it does make sense that he could make that claim. And Paul weren't you uh, saying that you were talking to some Cobble Banker brokers? Yeah I'm talking to a couple of groups down in Palo Alto and uh, they have about three to four weeks inventory right now and I've heard back from a couple of other real well, estate. Wait, wait, wait a minute three to four weeks of inventory as a not not three nine to four years. months. Not yeah, nine that, years that's either. less than at the peak of the market. So there, there are a couple of uh, officers that I've spoken with that are um, actually I've been your three to four months. Um, that are just tight right now. I mean, there's just nothing out there. That's They're still amazingly tight. That's yeah. yeah, three to four months is is, is pretty tight. Three what, to four what, weeks what, is it? Yeah, well, at the at the height of the market, what was it? Yeah, in the at the peak of the market, uh, you were right around in that four month three to four month time window so that's that's right about where we where we were three to four weeks would be much less but three to four months is uh, is right about where we were in 2005 and the the sorry the three to four weeks was that if there was there was not another home bought to them at the rate that they'd been moving through them well you know the other thing too is when you segregate it out by price bracket in the lowest price tier say under two hundred thousand in a lot of markets uh, outside of the core bay area counties that market is extremely tight because the yeah. investors are really flooding into that market and picking up that product. When you start to get into, you know, the over or the, the six to eight hundred thousand dollar price bracket has a higher level of inventory because that market isn't quite as active. So when you when you break it down and you slice it up, there's components of the real estate market that are extremely tight, in fact, almost impossible to get into. And you hear a lot of uh, real estate agents talking about taking clients out on tours to find houses and just coming up dry. Yeah. Well, the for the benefit of the listeners, you know, what we're really talking about is is we've got a ton of what's called shadow inventory or foreclosure inventory and that's really defined as essentially people that aren't making payments on their homes, they're already in default, the banks file a notice of default, or possibly the bank has even already foreclosed and owns that property, but that property's not coming on the market and there just isn't a lot of new inventory coming on. So one so might what are the banks doing? Well, the, the, the banks are actually trying to set the market. They're making the market right now. They've decided they're 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 not going to shoot themselves in the foot by releasing a ton of inventory, so that prices will further decline. Which is why a lot of people now believe, based on what the banks are doing, that we pretty much hit bottom. And in fact, 
prices are already beginning to creep up in certain Bay Area now, markets. How long, will it take, of, how long will it take the banks to release all that inventory? Maybe well, if it takes them five years. years or ten yeah. years, it's, you know, if, they, if that's what the business One price. of the things they're doing now is they're putting them out in bulk packages. B of A is uh, just announcing they're going to put out a bulk package of houses and just sell it off to one large investor. So they're, they're trying to even liquidate that way to speed up the process. And that's going to keep these houses off the market. So it's it's never going to impact well, the market. Well, they'll just be uh, rentals? They'll be they'll rentals, be rentals, rentals, yeah. rentals yeah. Rental inventory right. for large hedge funds. Which, as we talked about, the rental demand is pretty high, so it makes some sense. Yeah, if they, if they could purchase it at the right price. Right. All right, we are going to go to our thoughts for the day. Paul Kingsman, again, thank you for joining us in the studio. You're welcome. We'll definitely have to have you back on. Maybe uh, you'll uh, train for another Olympics, and then we can... Uh, no. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In 1949, popular mechanics said that computers in the future may weigh no more than five tons. I guess they haven't seen my old Commodore 64 in my closet. <laughs> okay. Or the, or the iPhone. <laughs> or the iPhone, yeah. And in 1977, there were 37 Elvis impersonators. In 1993, there were 48,000. Mm -hmm. At this rate, by the year 2013, one out of every three people will be an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> thank you very much. Love How, those do, do you like that? Thank, right. thank, thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Tune in next week to the best of investing. We're going to be giving away nine more free vacations for answering trivia questions. And our guest next week will be Peter LaCour, who specializes in municipal bonds. He's going to educate us and give us tips. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best of investing. So long. And that's a wrap. See, as my friend oh. uh, Kramer would say. Thank right. you, Thank you very much. <laughs>